This video covers material about humidity and the concept of relative humidity and what role it takes in our daily lives. The material presented was originally developed by Justin Weisman and modified and narrated by Alan Rodriguez. This video is made possible by the National Science Foundation funded project Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom at Ohio University. So I have a question for you. Do you know what is humidity? Or do you know what is relative humidity? Or perhaps, how can you tell if the air is dry or humid? When is the air more humid, during winter or during summer? If you answer no to any of these questions, or even if you feel you should review these concepts, then I invite you to study and review with me the presentation titled Relative Humidity understanding and applying the concept. I believe one of the ways of better understanding a concept is by doing it and having your hands over it. So for the next slides, we'll be doing an activity together. In the activity, you'll have the opportunity to determine the relative humidity of the room you are in right now. If you don't quite understand the concept, relative humidity, don't worry. I'll explain the concept to you afterwards or also, you can always finish the video and then come back to the activity. The activity is totally optional and it's up to your discretion to do it before or after finishing the video. Please pause the video in each subsequent slide for the next three slides only and follow along the sets of instructions. I hope you enjoyed the activity and were able to successfully determine the relative humidity in the room you are in. Now, before continuing, let's go over some basic definitions. Humidity, water vapor or moisture in the air, this is a qualitative term. Relative humidity or RH, the percentage of moisture that air holds relative to the amount it can hold. Dew point, the temperature at which the water vapor commences to condense. Saturation, the description of how full is something. An example, if certain substance cannot hold more of another one, it is referred to as being saturated. Now, let's better understand the concept. It has been said that warm air holds more moisture than cold air. The reasoning behind it it is that it is known that high temperatures evaporate water as opposed to cold temperatures where water is condensed or even solidified. So, it makes sense then that during a hot summer with hot air, more water evaporates leading to more water dispersed in air as opposed to winter. So, in summer evaporation predominates and in winter condensation does. So, as we discussed before, relative humidity refers to the percentage of water moisture that air holds relative to the amount it can hold. A relative humidity of zero means that there's no water or moisture in the air at all, while a relative humidity of 100 means that air cannot possibly hold more moisture than it already has. Makes sense the warm air versus cold air explanation, right? If it doesn't quite ring the bell, try to compare your skin in the summer versus in winter. Now, let's see how the relative humidity relates to our daily lives. In a nice sunny day, water commences to evaporate and disperses in air. This mass of humidified air keeps rising and rising until it reaches another mass of cold air flowing up in the skies. Up there, the cold air meets the warm and humidified air. This causes the water in the gas phase disperse in air to condensate. 
forming wet skies and ultimately this condensed water drops down as rain. In order to better explain the dew point concept introduced earlier, let's look at the interaction of cold and warm air. When the warm air meets the cold air, instantaneously and according to the law of thermodynamics, the system as a whole will tend to find an equilibrium temperature. As you can expect, the equilibrium temperature will lie in between the warm air temperature and the cold air temperature. Therefore, the warm and humidified air will cool down. As the cooling down process progresses, the system will reach, eventually, a temperature at which the first droplet of water is formed. This temperature is known as the dew point temperature. Now, you can be asking, is relative humidity important and is there any consequence associated with RH abnormalities? Well, yes they are. Among them, we have health problems. Dry air aggravates asthma and allergies. It promotes sinus infections and speeds the progression and transmission of viruses transmitted through air. Discomfort. Dry air, because it's not balanced with moisture, can even absorb moisture from your skin, which makes the skin feel cooler. Construction damage. RH imbalances can significantly affect wood and other construction materials, which may end in a fatal accident. Energy expenses. Because dry air makes you feel colder, you spend more on electric bills due to heating. Also, because dry air dries the wood and other construction materials, deformities are created in the windows and door frames, which allow for cold air to enter the house. So the next time you see one of these air humidifiers, then you know it has a very important function. Thanks for your attention.